everybody, and welcome to Season 4, Episode 8 of Pro Wrestling's Top 50. I'm your host, Travis McNeil, and today we continue our countdown of the Top 50 matches in Lucha Underground history with match number 43 on our list, which is the Lucha Underground Championship match between the champion, Marty the Moth Martinez, and the challenger, the Mariposa, from the October 3rd, 2018 edition of Lucha Underground titled The Moth and the Butterfly. Uh, so, Marty the Moth, you know, we've touched on him a little bit. Uh, he came around into Lucha Underground almost as like, I don't want to say a joke character, um, but you know, he was kind of like a, a definitely mid-card, lower mid-card or heel um, that over the course of the four seasons of Lucha Underground was built up so well um, that he ultimately won the Lucha Underground Championship, cashing in the Gift of the Gods title on Pentagon Dark, basically, you know, Money in the Bank style cash in to become the champion. Uh, he is one of the best success stories of Lucha Underground. Uh, Martin Casas is an amazing performer. Um, he's somebody that, you know, coming out of Lucha Underground, you know, we really didn't see a lot of. He's made some appearances on AEW Dark, and he's certainly someone that I hope that we get to see more of because he's incredibly, incredibly talented if given the ball to run with it like Lucha Underground did with him. Uh, the Mariposa is his fictional storyline sister uh, who was played by cheerleader Melissa. Um, coming into season four, um, when she eventually showed back up, you know, when this match happened, um, I, I thought it was a different, you know, woman under the Mariposa uh, outfit, uh, but ultimately it would, it would still be cheerleader Melissa. She would go through a little bit of a physical transformation. Um, so, you know, it, it was still her. And this was kind of a, a great blow-off match to, you know, normally when you say blow-off matches, you know, there's this pro prolonged rivalry. Um, but in this instance, it was, you know, a partnership, a, a brother and sister, you know, tag team. Um, that you know ultimately kind of you know went their separate ways um, but we got this you know to, to come full circle and it eventually to be you know the the one-on-one -on -one blow off you know after Mariposa turned on Marty so what happened is uh, at the end of season three um, Marty lost a hair versus mask match to Phoenix um, he tried to bail out when his head was about to be shaved and it was Mariposa you know coming out and uh, and you know bringing Marty back from the, the backstage area that led to him getting tied up and his head shaved. Um, coming into season four, we didn't see the Mariposa. Uh, Marty the Moth would be in the final two in Aztec Warfare, which opened season four with Pentagon Dark defending the Lucha Underground title. He would ultimately beat Marty and break his arm post-match. Um, this would cause, you know, Marty to downward spiral a little bit. Um, and we would get a backstage vignette, uh, you know, a cinematic scene in the Lucha Underground universe where the Mariposa returned, basically beat Marty senseless, holding him, telling him that he needed to focus and, uh, and go back for revenge against Pentagon. So when Marty won the title, um, basically he gifted his sister the first title shot, uh, basically saying, you know, uh, that she helped him focus to bring himself to the championship. Uh, so this was going to be the reward, and essentially they would play like when they were kids, which is incredibly, incredibly creepy. Um, I can't really think of too many, you know, brother versus sister matches in wrestling history, um, you know, even if they're not, you know, obviously real, uh, real siblings. Uh, but here we go. So uh, Marty cuts like a promo before this match, and he's undergone a, a transformation. Normally he wears, you know, his um, uh, his Aztec Pride t-shirt, but instead he comes out with like a cape, which is, you know, very moth-esque. Uh, he comes out with Reclusa, who we've talked about uh, in her match with Pentagon Dark recently on this program. Um, it, she was played by Chelsea Green, so she kind of comes out here with the mask of Sexy Star, basically saying that she was the one that had been terrorizing Sexy Star all throughout Season 3, sending her spiders and creepy stuff like that. And eventually she beat her senseless and took her mask, which explains, you know, um, Sexy Star not being a part of Season 4, you know, having a falling out um, when, you know, her personal character really started to come to light. Um, so we get this match, and it is wild. It is a brutal, um, it, it, it's just, it's, it's brutal brawl that feels very, um, you know, unpredictable in its nature. Uh, it's reckless, it's great, it's messy, it's everything I love about a brawl in pro wrestling. Um, so right off the hop, you know, Mariposa wastes no time. She headbutts Marty. Marty proceeds to kick her low, basically showing that even though they're brother and sister, they have a very tumultuous and very, you know, messed up relationship. Um, so we, we get just brutality. Marty takes her down and just hits like brutal cross faces, throws her into a bunch of chairs, is tearing at her mask, 
throws her head first on the announcer's table, which causes the Mariposa to be busted open. Uh, swings her into the announcer's table, like powerbomb position, like Samoa Joe would used to do, which is, you know, also a cheerleader Melissa slash Mariposa staple. So I really liked them using that on her. Uh, Marty's pie-facing fans as they're fighting through the crowd. The whole thing just feels uncontrolled, wild, and unpredictable, and I loved every minute of it. Uh, he power bombs Mariposa into the guardrails where the fans are kept, you know, on, on the risers, and then hits like a sit-out power bomb on the floor. The whole thing is super brutal. Uh, Mariposa does get a run herself, though, so this is not all just Marty, you know, beating his sister senseless. Um, he misses a chair shot. She drop kicks the chair into his head, and we get just an awesome part where she returns the favor with a low blow, and then just proceeds to start, you know, winging chairs at Marty, who's on the ground, puts him under a big pile of chairs, just starts then wailing on that pile of chairs with the chair. It's all really, really great stuff. Um, in the ring, uh, she gets a drop toe hold into a chair, a Samoan drop through an open chair, um, and finally looks to finish with uh, the Kudo driver, the cop killer, the vertebraker, whatever you want to call it, you know, the cheerleader Melissa, Melissa staple finisher, um, but Reclusa puts a stop to that. And the ending is really good where Marty actually puts her away with the package pile driver, uh, which is Pentagon Dark's finish, does the Cero Miedo before he hits it, and post-match breaks her arm, basically showing that, you know, he's went as dark as he could possibly get. You know, he put out his sister, he broke his sister's arm, and, uh, you know, he's, he's ready for Pentagon. Uh, he knows that they're going to meet. He knows he has to defend the title against him after he essentially stole it by cashing in the gift of gods, the gift of the gods, and, you know, ultimately challenges Pentagon to his own signature match, the Sierra Miedo match uh, from Ultima Lucha, you know, one in the first season. It would be how, you know, Lucha Underground would close out season four and ultimately the series with these two going to war in an incredible match. And this was a great, great setup for it. Uh, you know, intergender matches aren't everybody's cup of tea, but we've talked about how Lucha Underground had no problem showcasing them. Uh, this is a great example of it, one of the better ones that they did. Uh, it's violent, it's brutal. Um, both wrestlers, you know, stand on the same level. They have this great backstory coming into it, and we get a great out-of-nowhere, out-of-control brawl for the title um, that I feel is a great hidden gem from Season 4. Uh, Lucha Underground, you might be able to find it on the Tubi app, depending on where you live, uh, but if you look it up online, you can certainly find those episodes scoured across the internet. You can subscribe to my channel here on YouTube so that you don't miss a video. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Pro Wrestling, at uh, Wrestling 50 rather, and please join me again tomorrow as we continue to count down Pro Wrestling's Top 50.